Hi all, Mark here with the Exiles. I hope you're safe and well. Uh, in this instructional class, we're going to be looking at uh, the exchange of thrusts principle. So we're going to kind of tailor our class to uh, exploring uh, the exchange of thrust principle shown in the Jocko Largo section uh, initially of um, Fiori's works. Uh, obviously, it's, it's uh, sword in two hands type approach we'll be looking at. Uh, what we'll also do um, is practice two different types of cutting action uh, which can be used uh, offensively and defensively and then we're going to use those cutting actions um, to try and improve some of the mechanics of the exchange of thrust principle. Notice I call it a principle. The reason why I call it a principle is because it is a principle. Uh, we'll be looking at exchange of thrust sword versus sword, uh, but you can also take the concept of exchange of thrusts and apply it to uh, lots of different weapon types. For example, uh, sword versus spear. In fact, the spear you know, versus spear is all geared around uh, the exchange of points principle. Uh, what I'd like to do in this lesson as well is also show the approach to using a dagger versus a sword uh, and, and doing exchange of thrusts as well. So what do I mean when I say exchange of thrusts? Well, that's literally what Fury calls the play uh, as it's first seen in the Jaco Lago section of his works. Um, in effect, uh, it is to displace your opponent's point and line up your own point so that uh, you can send in your own thrust. Now you can find this in lots of different ways. You can find it literally as your opponent is thrusting at you. You can, come, as we'll see, you'll come offline uh, and you'll basically take the center with your own thrust. But you can also find it in lots of different ways from cutting actions, um, from covers. Uh, and that's why we, we all always refer to this as a principle because it is kind of there in lots of different ways. Uh, also, I think what we'll do is end with uh, an Abritsari play uh, in order that I can get your feedback, hopefully, uh, just to see if uh, Abritsari again translates into what we're trying to do here. Bearing in mind, we're still kind of experimenting in and working on you know with people's feedback to try and improve these videos uh, and the content within them so enough waffle for me let's look at exchange thrusts and uh, and get straight into the lesson so here we have uh, the 11th play as we number them so uh, of the Jaco Largo section of the uh, of the sword and two hands so as you see here this play is called exchange of thrust so uh, this principle as I've said in the introduction you will find not only in the subsequent place where you're working on the premise of the exchange but also you'll find um, the same principle in the dagger section and you'll find the same principle uh, later in the manuscript especially with the spear and things like that and the half sorting so there's lots of different ways to enter this what you'll see is in effect from a very basic setup is the opponent has thrust and you've displaced your own thrust this is this is the, uh, the the person doing the technique with the garter on you are displacing their own thrust and uh, and lining up uh, and lining up your own thrust to the opponent's uh, face or body so this is a very basic way of entering this play uh, and we're going to explore a little bit about this today now as a general rule but not a hard and fast rule you enter into the exchange from a mid or low posture Okay, and if you're in a high posture, then you would come into the next principle of this section, which is breaking of the thrust. And that's something I'd like to explore in the next video. Okay, now as I say, that's not a hard and fast rule. Um, you'll just see that the mechanics of this uh, are a little bit easier when you're coming from a mid high or low thrust, uh, low uh, posture. That being said, what we'll do first is practice two types of cutting action um, where we can come from high or low uh, just to really explore the mechanics of what's going on with this principle. So let's get started with that. Okay, so one of the first things you'll notice when you look at the first play where this is shown in the Jaco Largo section is that the right foot is coming forward. It's Jaco Largo, so you are actually starting with your left foot forward but you're bringing your right foot forward uh, to close down the distance once you've started the exchange, okay? And that's part of the action. On that basis, we're gonna practice, as I say, two different types of cutting action, okay? Which we're then going to need uh, when we actually start looking at the technique itself. So, as I've said in the intro and then a bit afterwards, generally, um, you would exchange thrusts in this type of uh, instance, from a low or mid posture. Okay, so posture breve is a really easy one. If the opponent is thrusting at me, I barely have to move my arms. I'm gonna come offline and step straight forward. And part of that action is going to be to come offline past the point of their thrust and basically just line up my own. So in a very simple sense, that's the basic mechanic of the play. That being said, um, we're gonna look at getting to this from a different posture. So we'll start low first, okay? Now, uh, the, cut, the first cutting action we'll do is what I like to call a trail cut. Basically, you're bringing the point online in a cutting action, and then you're, you're basically uh, twisting the body and extending the arms into the cut, okay? 
So from, for example, Porta de Ferro, uh, which is a very applicable position, applicable posture to, to practice this uh, exchange of price principle, especially because your middle is open and your opponent probably thinks, yeah, I can, I can maybe get away with a cheeky thrust. What we're gonna do in terms of practicing the cutting action is we're going to, first of all, keeping our feet completely static, is practice bringing the point up and to brevet as quickly as possible. Once we've come up to brevet, we're gonna let the weapon just drift out. Okay, so we're going to bring it up and let it drift out. All right, up, let it drift out. Now to bring that point up and get it to poster brevet, it's the, my rear hand that's doing most of the sort of levering on the weapon. Okay, I'm pushing with my lead hand a little bit, but it's the rear hand that's snapping it into position. Okay, and then once the weapon has come up, it's both hands and the hips that extend it. Okay, so cutting to brevet like this is uh, this action is very similar to an action I did in the last video uh, where we were doing the villain strike. So we were coming offline and we were snapping the weapon down into posta breve. It's a very similar type of action, okay? So I'm keeping the feet completely static initially. It's really hard because my, my left foot wants to come offline, but for the sake of this initially, I'm snapping up into breve and I'm letting the weapon drift out, okay? Now I'm keeping that breve quite close to my body. Okay, I can let it drift out a little bit further so I can cut to the mid-range like this, so a quite extended posture breve, and let the weapon drift out. And what we're looking to do is smooth out that action. Okay, now I'm keeping that quite tight, and the reason why I'm doing that is because this is, this is the action I'm going to need for initially how we're going to set this play up. Okay, now I'm doing that from a low posture. I've said from a high posture, okay, often you'd be breaking the thrust, so you'd be trying to actually break its path, which is the next principle of the Largo section. But we can still exchange from here using this, the same action in this instance, okay? So from here, or you know, even posture de Donner, but let's do Finestra for now. What we're gonna do, same action, bring us down into Breve and extend the point forward. Okay, so down into Breve and extending the point forward. So once we've practiced that a couple of times, and feel free to uh, you know pause the video and have a little practice yourself what we really need to do is look at the feet okay because this without a step is very clunky very awkward to a furious so um what we would generally do is look to step off line now i'm on the right side of my body okay so really what i want to do is step off line to the right okay so if my opponent is thrusting and this is the reason why the right foot comes forward i want to come off line with my left foot before any other action starts and then i'm going to come into breve as we were doing and let the weapon drift out so that breve really is an insurance policy okay by by coming offline you would hope that i have started to come around their thrust anyway now obviously this principle as we're looking at it now isn't going to work if the opponent is five inches from your face okay you're never going to have the speed to come offline so finesse is a good position to think about this. You've dropped away from your opponent, you've given them loads of space, and if they're untrained, then they're going to think that that thrust is on, okay? So you let it come. You come offline, we're stepping down into breve, and then we're extending forward with our cutting action. Okay, so you can imagine if they're thrusting, stepping offline, the breve should take their thrust to one side, which immediately lines me up for the second part of my action, which is my own thrust, okay? Offline, breve, thrust, and then from the front. So I'm in Fenestra, okay? Offline, breve, thrust, okay? That's cutting action and sort of entry uh, number one, if you like. <clears throat> and as I say, you can do that from low or high. So from low of a step, coming offline, into breve, and letting this drift forward. And if I smooth that off a little bit, and imagine a little bit of movement, thrust comes in, I'm snapping, and then just send in my thrust, my thrust straight forward. We have a fan. Yeah, in and forward, okay? Now, once I've set that thrust, I can step back, I can follow it, the world is my oyster. Offline into breve and let it come out. Now, instinctively, I keep that tight to my body, but as I say, you can let that breve action just drift out a bit if you want to. Yeah, it's your call. Have a practice at both, from low, stepping offline, breve, into the thrust and from high like a finestra or posta de donna yeah stepping offline breve into the thrust now let's look at the next cutting action 
Okay, so I mentioned that this principle doesn't just apply to sword versus sword, it's particularly useful for sword versus spear as well. And this gives us a chance to look at another type of cutting action. And for the class, these are just the two that I chose, okay? So, whereas before we were preferably coming from a low posture into breve, um, without a step for the, for the sake of demonstration, and then we were letting this drift through, what we're actually gonna do now is one continuous cut, okay, an arc basically into the final position, ready, uh, basically lining up my point against my opponent's face or body, okay? Um, quite often, this is the kind of position you find from Coda Longa, okay? Coda Longa, positive posture, um, is designed for closing in like this, okay? So this is a good chance for us to explore this cutting action. So, whereas before, um, as I say, I was coming uh, offline, snapping into Breve and then letting the weapon drift out, what I'm actually gonna do now from Coda Longa, especially because the weight is on the front foot, I need a really quick action with my hands, um, I need to unload this leg and then come offline, so it's a slower action in the feet. I need to come up, and what I'm going to do is effectively just arc my cut with the step and land in my final position, okay? This is a nice, fast action if you're starting at distance, which with Largo, you should be. So I'm on the left side of my body. I want my opponent to step, uh, which means that if they have to step, they're starting in the distance that I want them to be starting in, so they're not close enough to hit me with just their hands, but also because they step, their action is a little bit slower than just hands alone, which means I've got time to execute my footwork and my cut, okay? So front weight, front foot is weighted up, that's what Code Longer is all about. They are stepping with that thrust, so they're, you know, they may be coming from the left or the right, we want them to step with their thrusting action. We don't want them to be too close, okay? I'm gonna unload the front leg, step offline, then my arms start. I'm gonna come right the way over with the right foot and basically land in my, in my extended, um, uh, almost posta longer type position, okay? What we should find from here is because I've come offline and again, I've brought that weapon around, what we should find is that their thrust has been taken to one side and if not, I've got Frontali to pick up any pieces I might have uh, messed up. Uh, we should find effectively my opponent walks straight onto my point, okay? And if they don't, it's gonna be very close to their face or their body. Now, this is useful for someone with a spear, okay? There was a video this week of a couple of guys who were playing around with looking at spear, uh, and one of the guys put up the video and made the comment, I'm really struggling with how I approach spear with a sword, okay? If my opponent has a spear and I have a sword. This is one way to do that. You're getting past the tip of the spear, okay? And you're bringing your own weapon into the range where it's going to be useful. And this is a great way of doing that. So Coda Longa, inviting the attack as their big thrust starts, I'm coming offline right the way over, okay? With one fluid circular type cutting action, landing nice and extended and I should be there to thrust and if I'm not then I've gone past the point of their weapon so I can step in again with that thrust if I have to make up the distance okay so we've got those two actions there we've got the first action which is to come offline to snap up and then let the weapon drift out and then we've got the second action often from Coda Longa because of that weighted position we're coming offline and we're coming right over okay and you can finish in Posta Longa if you want to um, but generally speaking, it's a bit of a breve longer hybrid. From the front, go longer. We're coming offline, right over the top, nice and extended. And I should be in a position there, past my opponent's point to start that thrust. And if I'm not, then I can step again, make my thrust close, uh, whatever, whatever I need to after that. Yeah, so we're off and we're over and I'm here or I'm here, okay? And that is the two approaches we're going to take today to looking at uh, to looking at exchange of thrust with sword in two hands. Okay. So let's look at the same with uh, with dagger. <clears throat> I'm going to leave the scabbard on this uh, just again because I'm going to be holding it potentially, and I don't want to have to oil it up later on. Um, but we often get students to do this uh, this approach with dagger versus sword exchange of points uh, to get them used to the kind of footwork and offline action that's required. Okay, it really is absolutely key to come offline. I say that if you're not moving your legs, okay, then a very small reorientation of the front foot is enough most of the time to actually cover off against the thrust. The problem is though, is you've got to make up all the space once you've put their weapon aside. And that can be quite slow and clunky and gives your opponent uh, time to react. 
But in either case, we have a poster like this, okay, with uh, with just the just the uh, dagger, okay, and I'm looking over my shoulder at my opponent. So if you're my opponent, I'm stood here like this, okay. Now this is dagger versus sword. This is not the kind of fight that I want to be in as the person with the dagger. In principle, the person with the sword, or even a, a, a longer weapon has almost every advantage over me. This is a last ditch approach, as is all the dagger versus sword in the system. But I'm stood here like this, okay? And effectively, what I'm saying is, hopefully you're untrained, you see a massive opening here, and you think, well, yeah, I'm gonna thrust at you, okay? Here is where the offline action uh, is, is super key and, and why we use this approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come offline with my front foot as that thrust has been launched, and I'm gonna pirouette on that back foot, okay? I'm gonna use the dagger to put aside that thrust, okay? coming offline, which then clears the line for me to come down the length of their weapon and attack them with my dagger. And we, quite, as I say, we quite often get students to do both of these, uh, so with the sword and then with the dagger or the other way around, to practice that action of coming offline. From the first video where I did one-handed covers, the cover on the outside, I described an action where I'll come offline with the rear foot and I'll snap across using the rear foot as like a pivot, basically. Same principle, okay? You can, if you have the distance, you can do that as one smooth action. So you can come offline and pirouette, basically. Putting the thrust aside, it might be a little bit high, uh, I'm just keeping it at hip height. Um, to put aside their thrust, you have to move quickly, I'm closing the line and I'm stabbing, if you have the distance. If distance is a bit shorter, okay, you're gonna have to move the arm uh, out of sync with the foot. So you're gonna have to come basically offline and try and collect that thrust at the same time. So whereas before I was going one, two, what I might have to do if they're a bit closer is like this, hand and foot at the same time, then step to close the distance past the point of their weapon into the range where I can employ my shorter dagger, okay? So there, and then we're coming up and through. It's worth practicing that to get into your mind this idea of actually coming offline. And it does need to be, even with the sword, you do need to come properly offline for that uh, most of the time, okay? So we're stepping and we're coming offline, or we're coming offline with the hand and the foot moving at the same time, coming round the point and I'm here, okay? So that's doing it from this posture, basically, where you drop into it, come on, thrust at me, and we're off, all right? You can also um, do it uh, going the other way as well, okay? So I'm here, all right? Again, this is all last ditch effort type stuff where I'm coming offline with the left foot like we were with the sword, and I'm coming around this way. So I'm turning like this, okay? So what I'm doing in this instance, I go my dagger like this or like that, I'm waiting for that big thrust to come in. Let's say for argument's sake, it's a slightly higher thrust to chest height or face height. Same principle, coming offline, coming up and through with a sixth master type action to put aside their point and I'm thrusting, okay? And if I have an overhand grip, same principle with seventh master, coming offline to take this nice and open and down the line. Now those two actions are not plays that Fury shows, okay? But they are important principles to learn just to explore what's going on with the feet and coming offline. So I'm stepping, coming up, a la sixth master. I can check the hand if I want to, or I can just come through and thrust. Or if I'm overhand grip, same principle, offline and around, okay? Putting aside that point, if it's high to my chest and my face, and coming straight down the line. So it's often worth just looking at how you would approach it with a dagger, and then putting it back into the sword to help with your footwork, okay? In essence, that is the basic principle of exchange of points. Let's just explore a couple of other options as a bit of theory, just to kind of show you how this manifests itself in different ways within the system. So in no particular order, as I say, let's just, as a bit of theory, uh, look at a couple of different ways we can set up the same sort of principle, okay? So we can uh, do it with one hand, okay? So the thrust comes in, I step offline, there's my cover, okay? So I'm putting aside their thrust and I've got my own thrust lined on. That's exchange of points. Thinking of other random examples, let's take something from the left side two-handed, okay? So I'm right foot forward, I'm on the left side of my body, okay? Opponent thrusts in, I'm high, which means that in principle, Fury wants me to break that thrust. As I say, we'll come onto that in our next lesson, but I can still exchange from here. Same principle, they're thrusting low, potentially I'm gonna cut into posse breve. This time I need to go offline this way, so I'm coming offline, 
snapping down into posta breve to displace their thrust and off I go. Other ways we can enter the exchange of uh, thrust principle is uh, through uh, frontale, for example. Uh, I could be a, in a low posture on either side, it doesn't matter, okay? Opponent thrusts in, let's say it's to chest or face height, I can snap up into frontale. It's not so important to come offline now, but it helps. Sorry, aeroplane. Okay, uh, so as I say, into posture frontale. So uh, my opponent is thrusting at me, I don't need to move the leg now because I want to be on the right side of my body. I'm just going to come offline with it, snap up into posture frontale, so over my right shoulder, over my right leg. My sword point has gone high, but that's okay. It's still an exchange of points because I can still drop in a thrust, or if the distance is a bit short, I can just make a cheeky cut back to my opponent and down. Same with half sword, okay? Say exactly the same principle, okay? I could be in a half sword posture, opponent is thrusting at me, I'm coming offline and around to deflect their thrust, to line up my own thrust. What I'm trying to show you is the principle and the fact that it happens kind of everywhere, okay? So what it's probably worth doing is looking at the places in the manuscript and trying to go through each section and think, okay, there's an exchange of points principle. I'm gonna pick up my dagger for five minutes. I'm gonna work through that play. Then look at the half sword in. Okay, that's an exchange of thrust principle. I'm gonna grab the sword like this and I'm basically going to have a play. So you can basically make a whole lesson for yourself using the footwork that I've shown you, okay, to practice all of your half sword in, your spear, poleaxe, whatever you've got at home. You can practice the principle for yourself. It's no more complicated than what I've shown you. Where it starts to get a little bit more complicated is when uh, you start to think about armor and stuff like that, uh, which is, again, not something we can really do in this kind of class, um, but it's certainly something we'll, we'll try and explore in the future, um, especially when you start looking at how people can counter your own thrust as well. And then you start getting into uh, uh, contra contrary parts of the manuscript and so on and so forth. So we will explore um, all of that. Okay, next part of the lesson. Okay, so what I'd like to talk about now in the lesson is uh, is beats, okay, and, and looking at uh, beats or rabats, but beats. Um, in order to do this, it also means that we get to practice our false edge satanis, so our low to high strikes from our left side in this instance, okay? So we're gonna be practicing our false edge satanis, okay? False edge is obviously the edge that's not in line with my knuckles, the back edge of the sword. Uh, I'll throw up on the pop-out banner above uh, a link to a whole video on the beating action, okay? Um, so false edge satani from this side, we're going to take out uh, Dente de Cingale for argument's sake, okay? Um, and what we're going to do is practice uh, just with initially a forward step, so a reorientation of the front foot and a forward step. We're going to practice a satani, a type of satani uh, from, from this Dente de Cingale position, okay? So I'm nice and coiled up, okay? Uh, I'm going to be uh, just coming straight forward at the moment. We'll come offline in a second. I'm going to reorientate the front foot, start the satani action. Now, what I'm going to do is send it from my hip to my shoulder as quickly as I possibly can. Okay, now this is a short range cutting action. So, times when you might use this is against your opponent's arms or against their flank if they're really close, so as a secondary action or as a defensive action. And it's the defensive action we're going to be using today for our beating. Okay. So I'm here, Dente de Shingali, just coming straight forward. There's the footstep, and I'm gonna come up and just to my right shoulder, okay? Here, straight forward, and just straight up to my right shoulder. I'm taking absolutely the path of least resistance. The quickest point from point A to point B is a straight line. So I'm basically trying to do that with my weapon. Straight line, straight up. Now, I can absolutely extend this satani okay i can do lots of things with it i can come true edge as well that's not the action we're looking for today okay so i'm here straight forward up like this okay now it's worth practicing that action uh pausing the video practicing that action um a good few times now where do i get the speed from my arms move first my body follows okay where I'm getting the speed from is actually from my, from my back. I'm dragging that sword high. I'm gonna need that speed of action. And I can't get it from my feet very easily because they will slow the action down, okay? So I'm here, I'm dragging that weapon up nice and high. Notice I'm stopping high on the shoulder, okay? So give the video a pause if you want to. And just practice that action a couple of times. As I say, um, other instances where you might use that action is to target the arms. So I'm coming off, I would generally come offline with that, but I'm basically just throwing it up at my opponent's arms, and snapping it up high, 
or if I hit something like the bottom of their arm, I've got a thrust on there, okay? Not to overcomplicate it, but I'm trying to give you as much information about this as possible um, so that you can see how useful this action is in other places. Step in and snapping up to the shoulder. So once you practice that a few times, okay, what we're now going to do is the same action, but coming offline. And this is where we start to think about the beating type action, okay, that we're looking for. So, down to Dishingali, I'm gonna come offline, right offline, it's super key for the technique we're about to do. I'm gonna throw forward that satani and step and land, okay? So my arm should arrive just a little bit before this foot lands, okay? Coming off, up, there's the foot. So my arms get there first, okay? One, two, okay? And it's the pivot, pulling back with the shoulders, throwing the hip forward, that gives me the speed. Now, let's think about the technique, okay? So, uh, hopefully, you've, or if you haven't now, you will at the end, you'll watch the video dedicated specifically to beasts. But what I'm looking to do is invite a big attack from my opponent, okay? I want them to cut from their right, to my left, okay? And I, I want it to be ideally a fendente, but it doesn't actually matter, okay? If they cover a different system, they're slightly more shallow. Even at a push, a very high mezzani type action, so a middle type cut, this action will work. What I'm doing with a beat is I'm trying to beat my opponent's sword from the path it wants to take, okay? As opposed to breaking the sword, which is breaking the path it wants to take. And there's a key difference, okay? So with a beating action, what I want to do in this instance is come offline, come up with my satani against the back of my opponent's weapon. So as they're cutting like this with a step, because we're in Largo, I want to come from behind and underneath, and I want to change the angle of their cut to keep myself safe. Okay, so I'm coming offline and I'm snapping this up to my shoulder. I'm coming behind their weapon and that's a beat. I'm beating the weapon to change its orientation, to change its angle. And because I'm coming offline, I'm keeping myself safe. So I'm offline and I'm snapping up. We do this one-handed too, one-handed versus one-handed. You step offline and you basically throw a satani up to the shoulder which takes your opponent's weapon away from its path, leaves them nice and open, and you can cut back down the line. I'll throw in a quick clip of that now. So I'm in my one-handed sword post, and this comes in, that comes down, this goes, and I'm through, and I'm gone. Yeah, that's the technique in isolation. Okay, so we're gonna do two actions off of this, okay? So again, you can pause it, practice the action, watch the other video if you need a bit more detail. I'm gonna come offline and snap up, okay? As soon as we've landed, I'm gonna send in a fendente back to my opponent with another step. I don't know how effective that beat has been, okay? I don't know if I've taken them off of that path um, in, in, in a way that's going to give me lots of time to do my own actions. So to keep myself nice and safe, I come offline, snap this up, I'm immediately gonna cut down, but I'm gonna come offline again. So my opponent, they should have cut, okay? They should have had their path of the weapon knocked to one side and they should be open like this, okay? Which gives me the space to send my own cut in. That's what should happen, okay? But to give myself the extra insurance policy, I'm gonna cut right on the edge of my distance. I only need to hit him with this bit, bosh, to the head, or if I'm a bit further away, to the arms, and I'm gonna keep going that way, okay? I'm gonna keep going offline into a basically a safe zone over there. So that's action number one, okay? Offline, beat, fendente, and away, okay? You can close with this if you're more experienced, you know the close plays. This is just one example of many. Offline, snap up, fendente, and away. That's action number one. I'll do it one more time. Again, you can pause it, have a go of your own if you want to. Offline and up, fendente, and away, okay? Uh, super good, this one. And because you're coming offline so aggressively, um, it, it quite often catches your opponent out. Now, just remember when you're coming offline and moving away, it's useful to try and adopt a posture after a, you know one or two paces in case you've hit nothing with your own attack and your opponent is completely fight capable. Take up another posture, carry on if you have to. So that's action number one, okay? Boom, boom, bendente. Okay, I'm stepping with the left foot. You can step with the right again if you want to with that cut, but take up your own posture. Action number two, okay, is we're going to, and this is more for a bit of exploration, 
we're going to practice turning that action into a cut back down at my opponent's legs. Why is this useful? Well, for the same reasons that I've covered this in the last couple of instructionals. Sometimes coming up high, doing any kind of actions up high, it gets a bit messy, okay? Your opponent might cover, they might close in a bit quicker than you thought. So you can assess this when you get to the top of your action. Come offline, we're up. Let's say that beat was of minimal effect, okay? So my opponent's weapon is still high. I'm pretty sure if I cut down the line, they're gonna throw up some kind of cover. Okay, so I'll abandon that fendente altogether and I'll basically reorientate the weapon to come at the legs. It's definitely worth a practice of this action. Offline and up, instead of this fendente, I'm gonna come down across my body and basically hit the top of the thigh. Any lower than that, and I'm starting to put myself at a bit of risk. Offline and up, down and out. And I instinctively go to Coda Longa there uh, at the end of that action, and I'll explain the reason why. So I'm um, Chingali, I mean, again, I'm just starting from Chingali. I could, you know, be in a couple of different posture on this side. Offline, snapping up, it's getting messy, or it might get messy. Cut down at the legs and drift back. Sit in Coda Longa, okay? And I can sit in Coda Longa because I've dropped back, I've regained distance, okay? and there's nothing cloud in my vision. I'm here in a familiar position to you know, perhaps cover or close again if I have to. Basically, you'll notice a theme. Whenever I finish an action, I always try and get back to a position that I'm comfortable with again, that I've trained from again. Um, because if they know what they're doing, a lot of your first attempt at a technique is likely to fail, okay? One more time with that one. Offline, snapping up, cross my body, cut at the legs and step back, okay? And that, I think, is also um, one of the actions in the video that I linked at the top. So that's beats, okay? And I've done all of those from the left side of my body. You can beat from the right side of your body, but as a general rule, you beat one or two-handed, you beat from this side, okay? You cover and break from this side, okay? You generally don't beat from this side. You can, if it's a cut to my right shoulder. You have to cross step. So it's worth a practice, and we do drill that actually with one-handed, but generally speaking, you beat from, from the left side of your body. Okay, there's a beat, or well, there's a beat, okay? So that's beats, okay? Let's look at one more element for today's class. I'm losing light now, uh, and then we'll call it a day. So we're gonna try a little bit of Abritsari, okay? What we're going to do is use this posta here, posta frontale, okay? And we're gonna try and do two plays after closing with this posta, okay? So the first play we're going to do is what we call the 12th play, which is a knee to the, uh, to the groin, not gender specific, that's gonna hurt no matter what. And then what we're also going to do is the uh, is the 16th play, let's say, today as well. So both using posta frontale, and I'll show you an example of entering into the close with that posta to access these two plays. Okay, so let's look at the posta first, and then we will um, we will work through those two uh, those two plays. So this is the posta here. Okay, posta frontale. Now, Fury's system is all about upright wrestling. Okay, it's not about going to the ground. Um, we don't, talked in previous videos about the presence of strikes and what I will do, and it's definitely worth a watch, is I will throw another pop-out banner at the top uh, with a six or seven minute video where I actually explore all the different options from these poster and explain what they're for. So in this instance, I'm gonna use a bit of, you know, gonna imagine as a bit of assumed lot knowledge uh, from, from you guys if you're taking part um, as we work through this from Posta Frontale. Abritsari to conclude then, posta frontale, okay? We're gonna take up Porta de Ferro, which is another unarmed posta, as a bit of a setup into this posta. Now, hopefully you've watched the video I chucked in the pop-out banner uh, so that you understand a little bit more, if you don't know already, a little bit more about what these posta are for, why they're so key to an upright uh, grappling situation when it's, for, when it's for matters of life and death, okay? Posta frontale, okay? This is now more recognisable than most mainstream martial artists, okay? Both hands are up high. Again, right and left and forward, doesn't matter. Very useful for striking, very useful for covers and defences. So again, if I use Ivan, okay? In itself, it's a good position to weigh in, okay? If, we're, if he wants to strike a little bit and I just want to gauge things before I close, it's a really good, it's a really good position to weigh in. It's also a very good aggressive action as well. So, Again, if we're just setting off and I want to move the close distance, I'm in, I'm through, I'm using my frontale. As another example, look, I've got a cover with my frontale. 
If that's a punch and I want to come to the inside, look, cover with my frontale to close, always to close, to close, to close. Plus the frontale is very versatile, it's good for being at loose, wide distances, very good to close as well. So I'm going to take up Porto de Ferro. I'm going to imagine, for the first play we're going to do, that my opponent is uh, basically just trying to grab at me. Okay, now they could have been striking, one or two handed, and I could be using that frontale to cover a line and close. But for this example today, and we'll do others in the future, this example today, we're just going to imagine they're trying to violently just grab a hold of me. Okay, so it hasn't properly kicked off yet, but it's going to, okay, or it might. So from Porto de Ferro, as my opponent comes forward, and they could have started really close, they could have just grabbed up, what I'm going to do is basically blast through into posta frontale. Okay, so the weight comes onto the front foot and I get the arms up nice and high with the bend in the elbow because to an upright grappler, if their arms are straight, they just become massive targets to try and break and dislocate. So I'm here, person's double grabbing, I'm coming up into posta frontale. Okay, right through the middle on the inside of their arms. What I'm gonna do from there is I'm going to practice securing a hold and coming down their back, okay? Now this is a very common wrestling type position. What I'm going to try and do, imagining, obviously I've said before we need to use our imagination, is I'm gonna try and keep them upright or as upright as possible. So I've come forward into my porta, uh, po uh, posta frontale and I've come around my opponent. Now this could have been a strike in itself, bosh, like maybe to the head and the chest or just double to the face or double to the chest. I've made that cover and I'm basically going to come up around my opponent's shoulders and come onto their back like this, okay? This is very common because when you've broken that distance, especially if the person you're facing is experienced and upright grappling, and it's not so common day to day in modern terms, but there are still a lot of people out there that understand this stuff. Um, what will tend to happen is your opponent will immediately recognize their grappling distance and they'll start to grab a hold of you too. So again, you have to use your imagination and I'm assuming a certain level of knowledge with this. Coming up and forward, okay, I may have made a strike or whatever, um, and then I'm basically coming around the shoulders and I'm dropping my arms low like this, okay? So my opponent will be very, very close to me now. And there may have been some tussling, some reorientation, and we may have had to shuffle around a little bit, but I've got to be quite fast because what my opponent is doing is basically figuring out how to damage me as quickly as possible. So once I've got that grip and pulled them nice and tight, by coming down into the small of their back, I'm keeping them upright. If I pull in like this, it stops them from bending like that, okay? So I've kept them nice and upright. I've maintained a good structure in my feet the whole time, which means that with this point of balance and this point of balance, it's safe for me to send in my knee, okay? It can be either knee. If I'm right foot forward and I've come low, I can do it with my left knee. If I'm left foot forward, okay, I can do it with my right knee, okay? It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Um, and that's the action we're gonna do now, but we're gonna talk about it. So, posture frontale, tussle, whatever, we round the opponent onto the small of the back, okay? I'm pulling him in nice and tight. From here, the knee goes up. Now, as I send the knee, I straighten up my back, okay? I'm, and that does a couple of different things. It adds power, but it also means that my opponent is going to find it really, really hard to do the counter to this play, which is to scoop under and grab the leg and we might explore that another time. Again, this is absolutely an experiment. This unarmed Abritsari stuff, with me being solo, potentially you being solo, it may not translate well to a video like this, so do please let me know. Up, around and on, okay? Good structure the whole time, there goes the knee. Now, once I've sent the knee in, instinctively I'll snap it right the way back, like this. I don't want my opponent to grab it, okay? And what tends to happen when you've sent in a knee like that, is because I don't have two feet on the ground to keep this grip tight, okay, my opponent will have the ability to bend away from that, from that knee coming in. If not before I've sent the knee, then definitely after. So by instinctively snapping right back to a good, nice wide stance, I've hopefully given myself a good footing again to do the next action, okay? If I just knee and step straight back down, What's tend to, what tends to happen is my opponent has stepped or moved back, bent their hips, which means it's very hard to keep hold of them anyway, but it also means that I've got no structure and they've got loads, okay? Because I can't guarantee that that knee's gonna have hit anything. It may not have done what I needed it to do, okay? So my knee goes in, I straighten up for all that power, and then I push back like this, back into a nice stable base so I can carry on with the rest of my fire. Sometimes what happens, okay, we come up into posture frontale, I can't get around their body and low, especially if they're big, okay? 
So from here is very straightforward. I'll just come around the head, I'll pull the head down and I'll just send a knee in to the face. Okay, so again, we've got to use our imagination. Okay, so point to the furrow or wherever, double grab comes in. If it's a strike, it's the same principle. I'll cover the inside line, close distance, still trying to look for that hold. But I've come up, okay, before I was coming down round the body, okay, but if they're, if they're big or tall, uh, I'm going to basically posture frontale, come up around the head, lean with my whole body to get them moving. There goes the knee, snapping out into a wide stance again. Okay, sorry, uneven ground. Um, and, uh, and that is basically that play, okay? So again, it's worth pausing that, having a play. If you know the system really well, obviously do it from different setups, Chingali, Longa, whatever you want to do. Um, and quite often, let's bear in mind, you'll find this play from when you're already grappling, okay? So we're doing it nice and clean. We're doing it from our posture, waiting, double arm strike, coming through. You know, quite often you would have already been grappling, okay? You find this, there goes the knee, there goes the snapback. So again, context is really important. So that's that play. Uh, let's look at the next play. This play is uh, a lot more straightforward, okay? It's the same premise. We're stealing the inside line nice and aggressively. I like this technique because you find it as part of the fight unfolding. If you've both come into distance and start grappling, no matter where you are, you can generally shoot up the inside and find a head at the end of your arms, okay? Um, but again, it's, it's, you've got to have context and use your imagination because you can also use this as a bit of a preemptive strike as well. Literally just coming forward into posture frontale, striking at the head, grabbing a hold of it, whatever. So uh, we are going to set it up in that clean way. So, um, you know, let's do it from the opponent striking. So let's say they've shot forward with a step and a big punch off the right hand or a grab off the right hand, but either way, they're leading with their right hand, okay? What I'm gonna do, again, for argument's sake, from Porto de Ferro, okay? I'm gonna step with my posta frontale to cover the inside of that right hand, okay? What I'm going to do is intentionally try and get my hands somewhere around their face, okay? So that's my goal, okay? Is to make the cover on the inside, but leave my hands somewhere up around the face, okay? So I'm here, I can come offline into it, I can come offline away from it. Again, it's a very dynamic type of setup. Um, I'm coming up and through to cover that arm, okay? And to, to leave the, the hands there at the end of the face. Another way to get into this is to come in with dentadish and garlic. So come down and then I'll shoot forward into posture frontale. But in either case, I've found myself here. I'm on the inside of my opponent. So one arm is this way. The other arm is, you know, it can be high, it can be shooting low, but I'm nice and tight, I'm on the inside. As per the picture, it is as easy as grabbing hold of my opponent's head and sticking the thumbs in. Sticking the thumbs into whatever you find here, here, whatever. The thing I love about this play is you find it everywhere, okay? And it's designed to be absolutely brutally effective. And that's what this Abrazari is for, okay? So I'm coming forward with a step to make my frontale cover. There's the head, I'm gonna secure the grip, thumbs go in, okay? And what you do from there is entirely up to you. You could combine it with the play after, you can snake out onto an arm, dislocate it, whatever you want to do. But uh, you know, this is a nice, simple action, okay? Uh, so we're in. Grabbing hold of the head, thumbs go in, okay? If I'm fingers up, it doesn't matter, fingers go in. Grab one, fingers go in, grab around the back, thumb goes in, doesn't matter, have a practice and lots of different setups. If you've got one of those sort of punch dummies at home, definitely worth practicing against that. Coming straight in, grabbing a hold of it, and just working away at the thumbs, uh, you know, their face. So those are two Abritsari plays. Um, I've done this video quite late in the day after working from home during the lockdown. So I'm starting to lose light and that's probably why the pace of this video has been quite quick. That might be better for people watching, I don't know. Um, again, the idea is you're practicing at home, right? We're on a lockdown, that's what these videos are for. Um, in our next video, I definitely want to look at breaking the thrust, okay? So the next principle in the Jocko Largo. And then what I'd like to do is try and look at some close plays. Again, we're gonna to have to use our imagination. This is all an experiment. I've had some really great feedback um, on the sort of things that people want to see. People have asked to look at plays and so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to try and work some of that in, but I'm in the same position that you guys are, or a lot of you are, in that I can't train with anybody at the moment. Um, so this is all very difficult. Thanks for watching. Please stay safe, and I will hopefully catch you in the next video.